What up? What up? What's happening, bro? Hey, what's going on? Y'all trying to get it together? Listen, I was pressing the wrong buttons. <laughs> you know, I'm old. You know, I'm just chilling here. We got my little faces. Hold on, let me show you here, Rocky. Hey. What's up? What's up? How you doing? I'm good. Very good. Yeah. Didn't sing happy birthday. We haven't seen you since your birthday party. You yeah, know? man. Appreciate it. Much love. Now that was cool. And then we got Tallulah over here. She was like, "What you doing, going live?" What's up, Tallulah? Hi. <laughs> How you doing? Good. You got baby Dusko with you, huh? Yeah, that's a that's a little baby. That's a baby twin. <laughs> yeah. So you know, I was telling everybody why it's important that you know you and I talk publicly about what you've been doing during the week because you actually fighting for us every day, and people don't really talk about it. So yeah. you, you know, you're the senator in uh, Indiana. And, uh, you know, so what's been going on with you? What's going on? What we fight for this week? Man, you know, we just got back in the session. We was out all last week because of the, the threats that they had on the state houses across the country. That's crazy, right? White people became terrorists? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody showed up, though. Nobody showed I up. That. I was like, they're not ready like that. You know what I mean? They talking. They're not funded. They're not ready to blow themselves up. I doubt. You know, they just made themselves hot. Right. Know, they, they, they didn't know how to be criminals. They running in the spots with no mask on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? During COVID, taking pictures of themselves, doing interviews while they committing a crime. Still, in, still yeah, still. And then I, still and then I, I think I heard the um the Viking dude is going to testify against Trump or something. Maybe that was propaganda, but they were saying he was about to flip on Trump. You know, ain't but no telling, man. Ain't no telling. You know, I think it goes to show that one incident, which was a significant incident that happened at the U.S. Capitol, even just the talk of a similar incident shut the country down, right? Think about that. Just the proposal for that type of stuff shut business down in the state of Indiana alone. Well, we were trying to take care of business, pass laws and stuff, but we had to stop because of the potential threat of some goons threatening to come to the state capitol to wreak havoc. Mm. Well, don't you find it odd that, you know, that's a, a threat, but I feel like going to work without proper mandate, like, you know, mass and all that would be more threatening to the people that are working in the uh, Senate building. You know what I mean? Let me tell you, man, they, they, I have colleagues that's walking around with no mask on. It's a joke to them. Right. How? How can it be a joke and so many people dying? I don't know. I think it's more of a, a, a personal a personal preference uh, of folks. And, and they, they're looking at it as propaganda almost. Like they're not even paying attention to it. You know, I, I see I, I see Duke. What's up, Duke? Got next, man. Where you at? <laughs> Duke just popped up on the timeline and he said, what's up? Who? Duke Tanner, Duke. Oh, boxing. Duke, what's up? You sending my clip of boxing, Birdo? You sent him that? No, no. You know what? I didn't send it to him. But <laughs> I was playing. Uh, I'm gonna send it to out there. Yeah, but it's like I have a I have a love for life so much that I just won't take any chances to prove a point. You know what I'm saying? It's like yeah. propaganda. Not I'm not taking no chances. I'm not playing those games. And it's like, who am I actually trying to be militant toward? Like. Who am I trying to prove to, like, that I'm not getting told what to do? I just want to be safe. And I think it's just about being smart. That's all. But that's look, just me. I'm diabetic and I love my life. So I ain't trying look, to pick it up. You've been the most vigilant, dis diligent person I know throughout this entire pandemic. Man, you still, <laughs> <laughs> if anybody knows where to around. find you, they want to know where to find Dame, Dame at the crib. <laughs> the whole, the whole, and I told you it was going to be like that for about a year and a half. I was like, I'm checking, I'm, Till the vaccine come, tested, I'm not coming back out. <laughs> nah. No, but we at that point though, man. So shout out to 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 the doc, man. The doc been doing a phenomenal job. Dr. Chris, cool. yes. Dr. Chris Purnell, man, worldwide, just laying it down, talking about the importance of uh black communities, brown communities staying vigilant on the COVID-19. I can tell you now, one of the biggest issues, and I think you and I were talking about this. Myself and Senator uh, J.D. Ford and Senator uh, Yoder and Senator Cordor, we sent a letter to the governor demanding that they start giving teachers the vaccine, making them a priority. 
What, is that is that like a, a op ed? Is that what an op ed would be? No, we just sent the letter to him directly. Like, look, man, if if we're if if we're trying to rush to open up schools in Indiana, yeah, we need to make teachers a priority and make sure that they had a vaccine. Yeah, and we can't, we just can't rely on saying certain age groups and age ranges, which I understand that the seniors are more vulnerable because of their age to catch COVID and, and the underlying health conditions. But at the end of the day, you know, we putting our teachers on the front line, we got to put them with the resources. We got to give them the vaccine if they want it. Right, right. And right now, state of Indiana is kind of slow to make that call. Well, you know, I'm talking to Dennis from OSG, and you know, that's, that's, that's 90 black principals. And he's telling me, like, even with, COVID, with, with the schools being open at, like, 20 people capacity, they're still getting cases. So, you know, even if money's given and all this, that, and the third, it's going to be really hard to open up the schools and make it safer. Money can't make it safer. Right. There's no money in the world that can secure that. So, yeah, I think the only other option is, unless you're going to reapproach the whole education system, which isn't a bad idea, you know, you have to make sure at least everyone is safe or at least at a point where they can't be contagious or give it, you know, but I think everyone should be vaccinated if they're going to be outside. But this, and every there's so much, you know, and again, I'm not going to knock anybody's perspective on it because sometimes these sources seem kind of credible, but sometimes they don't. But there's so different, there's so many perspectives on this vaccine. But at the end of the day, I'm, I love life too much to take chances. You know what I mean? Exactly. Like I think exactly. What, said, it's, uh, what made sense is it's, it, it's more risky and more damaging not to take it. You know, the risk of not taking it is way heavier than the risk of taking it. Right, and, right. And the thing is, because, you know, I don't know, but I, I, I am curious to see how this is going to roll out and as it relates to education and everything else. You know what I mean? No, no it's, it's serious, man. It's real talk. So what, what were you saying you were doing this week? So this week, man, it's, it's been a couple of things. We was dealing with the civil immunity case I was telling you about two weeks ago, where they're allowing businesses uh, to be immune from any lawsuits. Yeah, you're if telling me, yeah. If a worker uh, says that he contracted COVID-19 at the workplace. Right. Now, you a businessman, I can understand that to a, to a certain degree, especially if you're doing the right thing. Because when I come to your spot, you got people getting tested. You got, you got cleaners coming in disinfecting goggle got a goggle <laughs> i'm not sure at all. you got hey dame got you walking in the house going to the bathroom gargling Gargling, slippers, <laughs> keep that out of everything <laughs> i can get in the air filters and you know i still don't think i'm immune to it i don't think i can do enough right Work. but my concern is for the employers that's not that's frivolous. They're not even worried about that. They're not worried about protection, the mask, PPE, all the type of stuff, right. cleaning, disinfecting. So, but that that's one piece of it, protecting the workers. But the second piece of it is there the language that's in the law that or the bill that they're proposing doesn't protect senior living facilities. So places where I understand a senior, where, yeah. where, where, where they're seniors, it doesn't protect them, and that's where they're most susceptible to get it. Exactly, right. exactly. If somebody's being reckless, you know, it's not right. I understand. So I voted no on the bill, and I had to let my constituents know why I voted no on it. Right. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, if we make some corrects, corrections and some changes to tighten up their law, I might be able to get behind it. I might be able to. I'm not even going to commit to that. Because I understand small business owners need to also protect themselves. At the end of the day, it's going, if somebody walked into your establishment, it's going to be hard to definitively say they caught it at your place. Right. Okay. Right. So there is a level of protection that needs to be discussed. But at the end of the day, you just can't leave it blanketed. And it is just wild, wild west. Mm -hmm. That's the craziness that I, that I project seeing. So wait, let, let's let me just rewind because you know you you say it casually, 
but most people don't know what that looks like to say I'm not voting for something. So what's the what's the process there? Like if they put a vote for a bill that's been drafted up, and everyone has to, you know, like a, 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 over half has to. Well, how does the process with, at your, at the level that you're at as a senator? Right. So in the state of Indiana, in, in most general assemblies across the, the country, so we have 50 state senators, and in the House you got 100 House members. So in the Senate, um, let's just use this bill for example. The person that drafted this legislation, he's a friend of mine. He's a good guy. He helped me pass the legislation to get the casino in Gary. Uh -huh. So I got mad respect for him. You know, he's a Republican, but at the end of the day, he, he bought that business. So he drafted a bill because business owners came to him saying, look, we're fearful that people are going to start suing us. Uh -huh. So just like you and I worked on the legislation dealing with diabetes, right. he, took, he took that idea and he drafted a bill to address that concern, the civil immunity. So when he took that, he filed the bill and it got assigned to a committee. Mm. So that committee is a mixture of Democrats and Republicans. They talk about it. It's a small group of folks, probably a dozen folks or less. And if the bill gets out of that committee, it goes to the Senate floor. Then you can amend the bill in the committee, or you can amend it. You make it meaning making changes right. on the I, Senate I floor. I complaints all the time. I know exactly what it is. <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> so once you pass that second reading amendment, which is on the floor, then it, that, that following day, it goes for a vote. So that's where those 50 people right there. And you're, you you're part of that 50. Exactly. You make a decision if you want to support that or not. How Is it yay or nay? 50. How many people have to, uh, uh, 50, 50 percent or 50 people? All well, 50, 50 has to be unanimous? No, 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 no. It, the, yes or no, the, the more votes on yes, it, it passes. Oh, okay, so it's the, it's the more of 50. Because like, no, exactly. I know like for this homie to get indicted, it has to be two-thirds of the Senate, right? Right, I right. Mean, so for them to convict them at the, uh, okay. There's so many different rules <laughs> for different things. No, it, it is. It is, and that's how it gets confusing for folks if you're not paying attention. If you're not paying attention to what's going on, this just slips stuff right by you. Hmm. So you. So they, they it got on the floor, and you were one of the people that didn't, and you had to explain to them why, and you told them, go amend it, make it better, make some tweaks, and then maybe you'll get my vote. Exactly, exactly. So what happens with that bill now, it, it passed the Senate. I forgot what the number was. So now it's going over to the House of Representatives. And they're going to vote on it. Got it. So it got out. So, so more, more, out of the 50, more people voted for it. Exactly. Got to, got it. Right. So once it goes to the House, it goes through the same process. It gets assigned to a committee. If it passes out of the committee, it gets assigned. Uh, it goes to the floor for a second reading amendment. Like this is the second opportunity it can be amended. Uh, that following day, if there's no amendments, it goes to the floor for the full vote. Again, they vote on it. The majority wins. So at the end of the day, both sides, the House and the Senate comes back together with that one bill. And we'll... And, and, and a table of people might eight folks to sit and negotiate. We'll sit there and negotiate what should go in it, what should stay in it, or what should get out of the bill. Let's go. Vote for the authors to sign off on it. Then it goes back through the process again. This is crazy. And then it goes back to the floor. You either vote yes or no. Once you pass it in that chamber, it goes back to the other chamber, yes or no. Then it comes back and it's and it's up it's past the legislature. Now it goes to the governor. Then the governor signs off on it. Then it's law. Damn. Then it becomes the law. How long does that process usually take? I'm in session from January through April. So by the time we're we're done. In April, we'll probably have over a thousand bills or 
or less that we've we've passed into law and that the sign into law so it's it's an interesting process man we're one of a few states we're not in session all year long like a you know i'm in session uh like last year we were in session for three months it's a short session so you in you out you're taking care of business you get up out of the that's when COVID hit. When we wrapped up last session, from January through March, the day I came home was the the following week. The country was shut down. Mm. I saw somebody somebody in the comments was like, "When they gonna pass a law out there so they can smoke weed, and make it legal out there?" How's that man, going? Man, I hope that happens before I turn uh, <laughs> a certain age. But I don't see it happening in the next five years i'm really? getting real with you yeah That's crazy but here's what's crazy though when you look at it they're missing out on a lot of money it's, it's a lot of money but you got a lot of conservative like veterans they support it people that's uh on certain medications that's, that have cancer that gets chemotherapy they support it because it helps them uh with the side effects of the medication uh there's so many different conservative groups that support the legalization of marijuana but the position that indiana has taken the republicans have taken is that until the federal government legalizes that they're not going to make that they're not going to budge it's the same way that when we talk about the minimum wage and i was sharing with you a couple of weeks ago i filed a bill that's getting national attention around the minimum wage yeah i i prefer to call it a livable wage we need to people need to make a livable wage in this country so if you if you see the first 100 day plan that joe biden has, now, he already made it 15 15 dollars i saw that right 15 dollars right? that's for that's for federal workers right um, so so for federal workers the average with a minimum wage he He's moving it to fifteen dollars an hour, which is great. That's setting a tone. That's showing like, this is my priority. Right. So if the federal government moves the minimum wage up, then the state of Indiana is going to have to be forced to move it up. You know how much our minimum wage is, man? What? Seven dollars and twenty-five cent an hour. So, you, <laughs> so if you work ten hours, you make it seventy dollars and eighty cent. Take fourteen dollars away for like fifty dollars a day. That's the minimum wage in Indiana. Damn. Five days. So it, that's it, only two hundred and fifty dollars a week. So just imagine if you're a single mother that got to get transportation to go to to work. That means that's gas. That's that's uh, insurance. Sure. You can't. What you gonna get with a thousand? A, what is that? A thousand dollars a month. Like how could That's you live over a thousand dollars a month? It take you seventy three hours to afford to live in a two bedroom apartment. You got to work seventy three hours just to afford to stay there. That's not including child care. That's not including health care, out of pocket expenses. Uh, like I said, transportation, utilities. I mean, that's not a livable wage. So. Around us, and this is this ties back into when we're talking about uh, the marijuana laws. Illinois is legalization, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, Michigan has legalization. Indiana is right in the middle, <laughs> and it's, it's not legal. On top of Illinois's minimum wage is at eleven dollars, moving up to fifteen. And same thing with Michigan. I think they're at ten or eleven dollars. They're going to be moving up gradually. So in short, it's like certain states across the country are moving at a snail's pace to keep the average person at a comfortable quality of life living. We just talk about basic human needs, basic human needs, and it's, it's going to be a struggle. Mm. Yeah, that's why entrepreneurship needs to be taught in schools, you know, so you don't have to be 
subject to that and dependent on that. But if you are, that's crazy, you know? I'm, man, I'm sitting here right now reading that, that Powernomics book. Mm. This uh, this this the book your guy was talking about last year. Ah. Uh, and we was talking about uh during the whole presidential campaign stuff. Like this is the book, like when Ice Cube then was coming out talking about the black agenda, mm -hmm. and they were talking about certain things. To me, poweronomics is the black agenda. We talking about economics. They talk about having our own media, right? Having our messaging around what you're doing around Dame Dash Studios. That all of that is, is in here. Education, growing your own food. It's, this is this is the agenda to me, and we had to figure out how to put it in policy, right? Make it, get it, it to make it normal. Stuff. Exactly, exactly, man. So, I, even the what frustrates me, and I'm sure you probably experienced this. Is I live in a predominantly black city, and right now we fighting over some frivolous stuff. Just internally. I'm like, why the hell are we fighting over some mediocre stuff and we're not taking the fight outside of the people to the people that's trying to oppress us? Yeah. So that's the kind of the paradigm shift we gotta we gotta turn it around, man. It's, it's just ridiculous on how we are fighting over crumbs. That's pretty much how it feels like. You fighting over crumbs. And for everyone that just joined, that's Senator Eddie Milton. You know, and we just discussed in passing this week what laws he was stopping from being passed or trying to, or what what laws he's, you know, fighting to get or lobbying to get passed and speaking on how, you know, it, it works day to day. And the purpose of this is to inspire others to learn how to really truly make a difference other than just complaining, really knowing how it's done. Because once you're conscious, there's no excusing not doing it. So you can't have an opinion on something unless you're willing to go fight for what you believe in. And that's why I have conversations with the senator because the things he has passion for, he's going and you know, basically risking his life, going places where you can get sick or even get shot at to go and fight for an agenda that's better for the culture. And hopefully, because what people have to understand is if you know, he gets a law passed where he's at, if the rest of the country sees it, it could, could become a state law, it could become a federal law. So if you use that, you know, where he's at as an example, and it works, then other people will follow suit or other states. You know what I mean? And, and that's right. really, you know, it's, it's, it's never like everything counts. You know what I mean? And knowing Absolutely. counts. And knowing counts. So what's up next for the week? What's, your, what's on your agenda this week before session what, like, what's your agenda to get done during session while, while, while it's in season? It's so, April, I think you said. I just got a bill passed out of committee. It's going to the floor next week. This bill, uh, it helps people afford to stay in their homes. It waives the penalties and interest on their property taxes. So if a person is past due on their property taxes and is about to lose their property, we'll give them a year and we'll waive that fee of the penalties and interest and they'll just pay the, 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 the late fee of uh, the delinquency and they can keep their home and stuff like that. So, so if, if, you, if you have your house, but you ain't paying your taxes, we give them a year to get it together and they get a payment plan. Yep. They get with all of the penalties and interest over time that you accrue. That gets, knocked. Wipe, that gets knocked off. So, I'm going to give you an example, man. This blew my mind. In Indiana, we got about over, and this is statewide. Now, now follow me, because this is important. The, the number game on this is crazy. Statewide, we have 300 plus mi uh, million of delinquent property taxes. Right? Just, just statewide. Delinquencies is probably about 200 million. My county is called Lake County, Lake County, Indiana, because you know we're right on the lake, Lake of Indiana, uh, Lake Michigan. Mm -hmm. uh, that's 100 million. Now, the state average is 300 million of delinquency. Our county is 
300, I mean, uh, 100 million in delinquency of property taxes. Mm. The city where I live at in Gary, and we talk about, I'm going to kind of unpack this a little bit. Out of that 100 million of delinquent property taxes, we got 66 million. In one city, our city is 50 square miles, and we got 66 million of delinquent property taxes, meaning that people, the, the, the amount of blight and devastation in terms of businesses and homeowners and people that have died and left and not investing, that's significant. But it's also a significant amount of people that's, that's like predatory folks. Like we, I call them serial delinquent tax uh, payers uh, that they come speculate because they know Gary is going to pop in the next five, 10 years because of our proximity to Chicago. They know we're getting ready to pop. So they'll buy the land, they'll sit on the land, they won't pay the property taxes because they're waiting on a developer, somebody to come in and build a casino, or build a mall, build a whatever, a factory, and they'll sell it to them at a high, high rate. But we're not getting the property taxes now to pay for good schools, to pay for public safety, like police and fire. You see what I'm saying? It's, mm-hmm. it's, it's, it's a game. It's like a predatory system. I understand. I it's get crazy, it. man. So, so I, the law that I, uh, the bill that I passed, is out of committee. It's going to the floor. Uh, so, hopefully, once it passes both chambers, that money, or well, people will say, okay, they want to waive the penalties and interest. I'll pay this property. I get, I get that money back flowing in. I, I keep that property under my name, under my business. And it just kind of grow from there. So it's it's a win for the people, and it's a win for the for the cities, it's a win for the schools. So, so that's what you're going in there to fight for? You you drafting up the bill for it? It's it's already drafted, it's it's passed. It's it's like it's past the first stage. So oh, that's a, that's, that's a blessing. House of Representatives yeah. stage. Or? So okay. it's going it's going to the Senate floor. It passed uh-huh. the Senate committee. It's uh-huh. going to the Senate floor for a vote. And I'll keep uh-huh. you posted on that. Now, the second one uh, is a bill that I have to, I got, I got over 10 bills. I'm going to just give you like two or three more. But the second one is police misconduct database. Mm-hmm. So if a police officer is a, uh, has been fired or disciplined for any type of misconduct, no matter what it is, we're going to create a database so they can't just jump from one police department mm-hmm. and go to another. And there's going to be a transparent database to make that happen. It's like, it's like, it's like kid, uh, sex offenders. Exactly. Yeah, got gotcha. you. Exactly. Gotcha. So, so you drafted that one up or it's at the same place? I drafted that one up. I have, I have a hearing on February 16th on that. So the, the Public Safety Committee, they'll hear that bill. If they have any amendments. I'm, I have a couple of amendments. The amendment I'm going to add on there is that anytime an officer unholsters their weapon, I don't care if there's no shots fired or nothing. If, if an officer unholsters that weapon, some type of reporting needs to happen. Right. We got to collect that data because if we don't collect the numbers, if we don't collect the data, we don't know how to address these issues moving forward in the future. Mm. That's dope. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff, man. It's, it's a lot of good stuff. Well, some I, I, think, I think people need to know, like, they'd be like, you know, the cops need to be regulated, and they don't know that people are actually doing things to get the cops regulated, not the, ba- the bad cops. I mean, rather, not the good cops, because, you know, not all cops are bad, you know what I'm saying? But the bad cops, let us know who those are that are consistently pulling their hammers out, having altercations, and it should just be known so they know when... At least if someone's right. having, being triggered, being in an urban environment, keep them out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. No, that's real. It, or, it's real. Or, or, or having the right people in the right community so they care about the community because maybe they're from it or close to it as opposed to just looking at it as a job. Exactly. You know what I mean? Exactly. Yeah, that's dope. That's dope. Because, so, you know, people think nothing's happening. 
And they don't know that when things are happening, it's a senator with our color skin that's going there fighting for us. But they won't highlight that. And that's why I always feel that, you know, our heroes, the real ones, need to be highlighted because usually they're not. You yes. know? That's that's why we got to shout out people like Congressman Andre Carson that's fighting for us. Andre Andre Carson. Yeah, you know he's doing his thing. Congressman yeah. Carson, shout yeah. out to him. He was in the building when they ransacked it. He was in Man. the building. I know, I know. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I, I and they put him on the hit list. They put him yeah, on the hit list. The top of the hit list. Crazy. I um hollered at your man, Muhammad. You know, yeah. yeah. He said he got Corona duck, kind of dark a little bit, but he getting through it. <laughs> <laughs> he definitely make it where I don't want it. You know what I'm saying? I right, right. He ain't got he ain't got the Nicolette Corona. He said he he got the shit that could get scary. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. No, I talked to him today, man. It, uh, he 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 sound like he's doing a lot better. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm telling you, Dame. In in the next few months, I think as as we see the, the the vaccine and people the the country starting to reopen, I think the foundation that you've laid with your business and just the knowledge you've been dropping with folks over the months, I've been seeing a lot of people being more mindful of their own self development. Right, mm -hmm. I think there's going to be a, a an explosion of entrepreneurship, in, oh, in my yeah. opinion. Oh yeah. I, what I love is that people took heed to come out of this thing strong and not weaker. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, my daughter's uh, my daughter's uh, giving uh, baby Dusko a bath. Okay. So I gotta, <laughs> I gotta get back into the cute moments. I can't miss it. All um, right, man. But like I said, um, you know, what you doing? Let's check back in next week because I want to see what happened with these laws, you know, and, you know, everyone from the commission, everybody that's fighting for other people than themselves, big shout out to y'all and understanding that real wealth is family. So know what your dream is so you know what it looks like to live it. Exactly. This is my dream. You trying to read him a book? Oh, that's so cute. <laughs> I know. Okay, buddy. Okay, buddy. Look at him. Yeah, so I got to handle some All right, All right. Man. All right, thank All right, you, bro. Easy, bro. All right. Later. If you want another amazing video with the one and only Dame Dash, check it out right there next to me. I think you'll enjoy it. Continue to believe, and I'll see you there.